Hey guys, it's Barrett with the Gimby Camper. Today I wanted to welcome you to this week's travel. This is Chattooga Bell Farm. We're in Long Creek, South Carolina, which is in the very northwestern corner of South Carolina. From our house in Tennessee, if you take Highway 64 to North Carolina, you just pop across the South Carolina state line right there, and you're basically here. This is a very interesting place. This is a working farm. It's a couple hundred acres. They have an event barn here. They have a distillery on site. They have three RV sites. It's not what we're staying, but they do have three RV sites. One is full hookup and the other two were, I think, electric only. They might have some water there, but there's definitely no sewer. But they have a large dry camping area, which is where we're at right now, right on this, uh, I believe it's a private lake. And it's been wonderful down here. The only drawback for me to the dry camping, because we have our solar, we have our Predator 3500 on board, and that's helped us out a lot. There is a little bit of shade down here in the dry camping area. And for the most part, our one air conditioner that we can run with the uh, generator has been keeping up fine. But the biggest issue to the dry camping, well, there's a couple. Number one is it's not really level that much but i may do with that we did fine there we just i had three packs of the uh, lego style camco leveling blocks and that's what i use whenever i go dry camping and off grid stuff because our uh, curved levelers which is my preferred method they usually just sink in the ground now apparently they do have some mats that you can buy to put under those that supposedly keep them from slipping into the ground but I just, I have some levelers, so I, the block style, so I just carry those and, and they did fine. I almost needed some more. I do have to uh, alter my method a little bit though, because I do want to chalk my tires a little bit better. You either have to uh, buy like an X chalk style chalk for those levelers, or you have to get the chalks that are built for the levelers and I have neither one. So, I was pretty sure it wasn't going to go anywhere. We got the landing gears down on both sides in the front. The other side's chalked. And what did I do? I took a bunch of firewood and some chalks and put them, kind of wedged them between the tires just to have something makeshift. I don't do this kind of stuff that often, so that's why I've not went and got like an X chalk or anything like that. But I'm seeing that it's probably worth investing in so probably I'm going to get something in that category the other downside to the dry camping as long as you can do dry camping because it can be hot out here Woo! but like I say generators been fine keeping us all cool for the most part and at night we don't run it because it does drop to about 70 degrees we just open some windows and use some battery operated fans use DeWalt fans for those Basically, if you have any power tools, it's a pretty high chance that that company is going to make a portable fan, and that's worth investing in if you want to do any dry camping. But back to the point. So the dry camping area here, we do have a dock, and there's basically about three to four different spaces here. I think they have three spaces marked. Whenever you make your reservations, you make them on hip camp, and they're not subject to an exact spot. And so basically you're just, you know, reserving the right to come down here. But the issue is they have this pretty lake here and there's a dock. You can get some good fishing, swimming, whatever. But the issue is, is there's only one. It's pretty small. And obviously, like if you're coming down here and you're coming and there's nobody else here, you're probably going to set up right here in front of this dock, which is what the guys did that were here before us which had a pretty sweet looking camping trailer uh, like with the fold out tent and all that stuff so i gotta give them credit for that one but you know i stopped and talked to them before i set up and made sure that they didn't mind wherever i was planning on parking and, and we worked it all out but i didn't come over here to the dock while they were here they left this morning because i mean this is kind of their their trailer was right here and so it's kind of more in their space and I don't have a problem with them setting up like that. But, you know, it's just, it'd be nice if there was like another little dock on. This is basically like a little peninsula. So if you had another little dock on the side over here, something like that. But I'll also see that there's extra cost in that. 
And so I understand that point. You know, as normal riverbanks go, it does slope down toward the river or toward the lake, I should say, um, on all sides here. And one side's a little more harsh than the other two. So, you know, these two sides where the dock is and where my camper is, it's not as bad. But it did, it's about five inches off level where my camper is. And so you just got to be prepared for that stuff. Well, basically anytime you go dry camping where you're going to go somewhere where they don't have a designated spot for you to be in, right? They have a distillery here at the distillery. The staff was really nice in there. They have mixed drinks. They have tasting like platters or whatever you call them. I'm, I don't drink, so I don't really keep up with that. But it was a really nice area to hang out and explore. They also do um, as well do tours of the whole farm here through the distillery, but they only do those whenever it's not real busy. And obviously that's usually during a weekday and we're here on the weekend, so they weren't able to do that. But they told us, you know, just go around and explore the area all you want to. Um, the grounds are open here. It's a good family atmosphere. And it's been a really nice place to explore. They also have an event barn here. The event barn was very nice. I mean, it was, it was very nice. It's overlooking like a vineyard and you have the mountains in the background. It's, uh, this is technically in the background, but you can't see it because of the trees and stuff. But it's such a beautiful view up there. And like the front half of that barn where they do a lot of weddings and stuff, apparently it's all open. And so basically it's more like a huge like canopy right there with some mood lighting it's a very nice place to explore and hang out. They also have a bistro up there. I believe their bistro is located in that event barn. We didn't get a chance to go. They're open from like 10 to 2 for lunch every day. I think a couple of days are they're closed. I believe it was on Mondays and Tuesdays. And Wednesdays and Thursdays, they only did to-go orders. And then Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, I believe they do lunch in the bistro there from 10 to 2. There are also quite a few other attractions just looking around here with the National Forest and, um, you know, kayaking or um, rafting trips, that kind of stuff. And it just seems to be like a, a lot of stuff to do right here in this generalized area if you're going to get out and about. We did go over to the state park that's close by just to kind of scope out the, the sites and stuff over there. I wasn't too impressed with those sites just because they were all like cramped and close together and small sites. But this area in general is really nice. As far as cell service goes here at Chatuga Bell, I've got two bars of Verizon 4G LTE. It's been strong enough to uh, stream some stuff whenever I want to. And it very rarely cuts out and buffers. So all in all, it's a good usable two bar signal. There's a couple of things that I want to say about navigating to the farm here. And one's going to be, it's going to show up on most of your GPSs, but whenever you put it in on your GPS, it's usually going to take you to the event barn. And if you're coming from the main road, what you end up doing is you go straight when you get to the event barn, you just keep on the same road and it's about an eighth of a mile. There's a turn off to the right and you'll see a sign there that says distillery and points to the right. And so you turn right there and then it's about a quarter of a mile. You'll see a sign for the distillery. Now the distillery is going to be your main entrance point, no matter what type of camping you're going to do here. So you're going to turn in there to the distillery and you're going to go, they say in front of it, but it's more like between the distillery and the road. They also have a water hose right there. If you need to fill your water tank up or get some drinking water that they do allow you to use. Then right after you go through the distillery right there, you're going to turn right. So there is a couple of trees there with some curves that are a little bit tight. I felt fine going through there with my fifth wheel. The biggest issue that I had, I was watching everything real close as far as my clearances on the sides. The biggest issue that I had was a couple of lower branches that did scrape the top of my fifth wheel a little bit, but it was just very lightly and they were very, very uh, minor branches and didn't hurt it at all. So that's the only part that you really got to worry about. So after you drive through there, you just stay on that road. I'm showing you some drone footage of it here. You just stay on that road 
and you go all the way back. Now, the RV sites, there's one, the full hookup one's going to be at the distillery. Then there's a couple more like on the road coming in to the dry camping area that are over there on the right. They might even have one somewhere else. I'm not 100% sure of all the RV sites because we didn't stay there. I was just looking at the signs. And then to get to the dry camping area, you're going to get to basically a row of tiny houses. Uh, I think some people live there. I think they may rent those out too, but I'm not sure on that. But you do not turn and go in front of the tiny houses. There's a dirt road that just keeps going straight and it's to the right side of the tiny houses. There's not a sign there, but you just keep going straight and it brings you right back to this area here. So if you go during the day, they want you to stop at the distillery and talk to them so they can give you some directions. If you get here after the distillery closes, then uh, you know it says on their hip camp ad just to come on back in here. So I really, the only thing that I would ask them to do, um, besides if they wanted to build another dock back here, but you know, that's take it or leave it kind of thing. The only thing that I would ask them to do is to put a sign back there at the road where the dirt road comes in just so you know 100% sure that's where you're going especially if you're dumb enough to bring a camper in here like I am they do also say on there to be leery when you come back in here if it's just rained because you know you might get stuck or something like that but it's rained off and on this weekend and it's not it's not muddy or anything back here I think most circumstances you'd be fine especially if you have a four-wheel drive then when you get back here, you just pick you a spot. Now I'm gonna say that I've been very happy with my time here. We're glad that we came down here. It's just a little further from our travel window than we usually go for a weekend trip, but I'm glad that we chose to. Uh, we had a really good time here. Me and my wife both really liked it. So thanks you guys for following along and we'll uh, take you on an adventure next week with us too. Do not forget to hit that subscribe button.